Okay, sorry about that. I think I've got uh, things working here. Uh, new systems getting installed, so I'm learning. And things got moved around in the move. It is um, January 2nd, 2018, first session of the year. I'm going to move along as fast as possible with uh, a fair amount of detail, actually. If there's any problem with the mic, please let me know. I know some of our regulars are on holidays that normally assist me in that. Okay. Looking around the markets here real quick. So this is midday review. We're going to go through some swing trades and some of the action from today and some of the uh, stocks that I'm holding. So I want to go through some of, uh, there was a swing trading report put out yesterday. Uh, so this is what it reads in trading report January 1. I published it uh, um, as a complimentary edition. So I think um, most people will have it. The first one I want to look at that isn't on that report is um, uh, BTC, so Bitcoin. I, um, I won't even bring it up on the screen. I'll just say that uh, on my Twitter feed, um, I had, let's see if I can find this really quick. Uh, so, okay, I'm sorry. Technology. Okay, so on the Twitter feed, uh, on my Twitter feed, I had posted a falling wedge, and uh, that's on the daily chart. And, um, it is still in the wedge. I was thinking it might work its way out this morning. Uh, so I was thinking it was going to conclude early to the upside. And it didn't. I think that tweet is a fair ways back. Uh, let's see here. Anyway, you'd have to go through it. But... Um, well, it's not such a bad idea that I go back here for a second here. There it is. So this is the XBT USD uh, swaps for Bitcoin, but um, this is the falling wedge. And on today's chart, uh, it's sitting right in here. It was, it looked like it was going to conclude over this 13.8 resistance. And um, I thought it was a bit early, but anyway, uh, I think it can, in terms of time cycle completion, yeah, January 9th, which is where a lot of them are. Um, so that's Bitcoin. So I'm watching the falling wedge very closely. Uh, anybody that is a Bitcoin um, newsletter or crypto newsletter uh, holder, we are publishing tonight. <clears throat> Snap. This was moving through its uh, quad on the daily, so this diamond here is a quad. Right at the mid quad, which is where the support and resistance is on these quads, it took off, just about hit the top apex, which is like a perfect play, couldn't have worked out better, and then perfect short. Uh, so I'm watching Snap really close. So that was late last week I posted that. XXII, we have a fantastic setup in XXII coming. I won't go through the details right now. Uh, tomorrow, I think I'm gonna cover that one in a lot of detail. SSW, I'm going to look at uh, the actual chart, and uh, XOMA, I'm going to look at the actual chart because there's uh, decent setups in there. Oil um, up over its 200 on the weekly, so that's the 200 on the weekly. So I'm just running you through my Twitter feed, basically, just to recap. <clears throat> and it was hitting uh, inverse apex, apex, inverse apex, all the way through and back. Um, I didn't post back, but anyway, it stopped here. Um, but it looks like it's going to hit at least the mid quad here. That time cycle, I can't remember the completion of it. I'd have to check. <coughs> Pardon me. <clears throat> so I'm moving fairly quick through these because, oh, and then all the trend line resistance oil is cleared now. 
gold is right up against a, a quad or trend line resistance. Um, that's on the daily chart. GDX is in a quad uh, looking like it's going to get to its mid um, in its time cycle. So you just go, you go to the uh, my Twitter feed, click on these, and you'll see, um, you just look at this vertical line and the, the date of completion will be in there. I just can't see it specifically. There it is. So that's your time cycle, not completion, but peak, February 27th on GDX on miners. So these are some of the things I'm watching. The S&P, of course, I'm in long on SPXL, going really well. Um, the dollar, it's under pressure. MACD's down. Uh, MACD is a great indicator for swings in the dollar. Um, most of these that I watch, the MACD on the daily is a great indicator for swings. Just that is a, about a 15 to 20% a year return. Uh, not specific to the dollar, but of all the ones that I follow, uh, that I, we're building algorithm models on. If you just if you just ran the MACD on the daily, um, on these you'd you'd see 15 to 20 percent a year, depending on how you execute it, and trimmed and trailed, and um, of course um, 15 to 20 is not what I'm shooting for. It's triples, but triple digit returns per year. Um, January 2nd to 9th, uh, complimentary uh, open house in the main trading room. So just click on this link. Uh, winning 7777 is the uh, password. And we're also emailing to people on our mailing list many of our swing and algorithm model updates, annual updates. Um, so get on the mailing list for that. And I think I've covered pretty much the general announcements and what's going on. <clears throat> okay, so that's my Twitter feed. So I even use it. Well, it is kind of my journal that turned into a public display. <laughs> okay, so the, here's the S&P real quick. Uh, this is a one minute model, real simplified generation one model, buy and sell triggers. When you look at these simple models, um, you'll see these quads or uh, what are formed, the quads are formed or diamonds are formed uh, on the FIB uh, trend lines. And uh, not all models follow the same discipline, but they follow the same um, structure most. Uh, the point is, is that the green and the grays are your buy all the all the time. And uh, so the, basically the bottom of the quad, mid quad, and top of the quad, right? Um, and that's the whole goal is to get uh, equities that will move through or whatever. Um, digital currencies or, uh, I mean, cryptocurrencies or um, currencies or whatever to move through the quads so that you can plan your trade so that, you know, uh, if it's trending up, you know, your mid quad here is your resistance and that's probably where you should trim if you're getting long say at the mid quad over here it makes it nice and simple the reason why there's a gap there is uh, the futures and how this works but anyway from quad to quad uh, you should be able to trade through them uh, here you know here's a perfect example of a long well here this is where I went long so back here it had uh, settled down on top of support and once it got into here into this quad into this inverse apex in here I hit it long and I've been riding it all the way through um, could have closed last Friday up here it didn't because I, I have a suspicion that we're going to go a lot farther so we're sitting here now so it's nice gains on a big 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 position um, if it doesn't prove out it doesn't prove out I'll cut and and that's the way it is. Okay, so that's the S&P as far as um, the swings. So there's a couple in here I want to take a look at. So this is that swing report from yesterday. <coughs> uh, recent videos are listed here. Um, they were kind of rough getting into Christmas time, the setups. Uh, of course, January will be a lot more structural, so they're not the best uh, swing trade review videos. 
uh, P&Ls are on here. Q3 and 4, Sartage, I'll have those ready right away. Uh, so here's that snap play. Um, so it's really that support in 1461 at mid-quad that you want to watch for. If it gets north of there, you can look for up in here in the 17-ish range. Or below, uh, you can look down here or even here. Those are always your three different areas of every quad to watch for. Anyway, in the report, uh, the buy-sell triggers are all listed there. Um, so that's snap. Very. So it's at highs for a possible breakout. As of Friday, these are all as of Friday. AWR. Um, there's some specific ones here I wanted to look at. CDNA is getting up against its resistance. Fold that one all the way through. Uh, NAC uh, hitting its quads. Perfect. So that's another example, right? If it stays underneath this midline here, it's going to target down here. Now, you know, for it to tank, all this is a large quad daily, is a, you know, very large. So you would target here first and see what happens, and then target there, and then target there. But the reality is, for it to hit the bottom of a daily quad like that, such a wide range is not normal. But you can definitely look for um, your support in here. And I think that's around 145. So yeah, here's the buy-sell triggers here in the report. Uh, it's not specifically what I wanted to look at anyway. <coughs> XXII, um, all the all the triggers in here I walked walked through in the report. You might want to look through. Um, but this is kind of an interesting setup. This one. It. Um, it hit this target perfect. It hit this one. For it to hit two, so this is a weekly chart, for it to hit two apexes of the quads like that, pretty amazing. And it's coming into the next one here. I guess my point is, the reason why that's pretty cool, if it actually hit that, that one way up top there, like I think it's around seven bucks. It's trading, you know, to 80 or whatever as a Friday. So the potential upside is huge. Now, whether or not it'll do it or not, that's that's why you have all the lines on these charts, whether it's the diagonals, the quads, or the horizontals, so that you can go decision to decision. You know, each one tests out. You, you make your move. Uh, shop. Anyway, here's SSW here. So SSW, swing trading chart on daily time price targets and buy sell triggers. Price trading above 200 day moving average. So when I talk uh, daily with time price targets and buy sell triggers, so time, these verticals give you the time of the target. The target is the red, various targets, and depending on where trade's going, you trade uh, decision to decision, these horizontal lines, these fibs, toward that target, right? Now, even though you'll have these four targets in these quads, because as it goes into here, it's going to target, you know, in here, it's going to target here or here. Once it gets into the quad, it's going to target to the top, it's going to target the side, it's going to target the bottom. As it goes through the fibs and it gets on a support and proves the mid uh, horizontal fib line mid quad is most critical. Once it gets up over that, it'll target that top target. Not saying it'll get there, but if it turns full bull, it'll hit that. And how close it gets to that gives you indication of how bullish it really is, or vice versa, how bearish you know sentiment or trade is at the time. SSW has the 200 MA, so I find this setup really cool. So, uh, price trading above the 200 moving average on the daily. It's the pink line on the charts. Price trending toward upper apex of quad, white arrow, red circle. So, white arrow, red circle. So, it trended up, so that means it's bullish, right? It's bullish advantage. 
uh, and trending toward it at the right time in the cycle is more bullish than trade has been in recent time. It didn't get there, but it was trending toward upper apex resistance, and that is advantage bulls. So you can see in the last quad right here how it didn't trend either up or down. It just entered the quad and stayed flat, kind of fell off, came into this quad, got close to the support to the mid quad, and then went straight up at the time cycle. That tells you there are bulls in there. So it's just a matter of whether or not it proves out or what proves out into the next quad, right? Um, so then it goes through uh, price time cycle peak bearish targets. So it gives you all the targets for the next quad uh, and exactly what to watch for. So this is a good setup, especially as you get into this quad wall here um, as a test through the wall, either to the upside or downside, and then it tests to the upside or downside of this mid quad. Those tell you everything that you need to know because if it gets through the quad wall and it goes north, it gets up over this mid quad and into here, it's going to target this target. It's a matter of how bullish the buys are, you know, uh, how aggressive the bulls are will determine whether it actually hits there to the downside. Um, so this is a good setup. This is on the daily. It's over the 200. I'm not saying it's going to get there, <coughs> but I am saying it's setting up. So you got to just watch and see that at uh, ITCI, test of the 200. SENS. So you can see how very specific this charting is, right? You get your time, price cycles, your verticals. And then this walks you through, like all these colored arrows uh, can be related back here, right? So it tells you exactly what to watch for and how to watch as trade goes through these. But SENS, this was an absolutely beautiful trade on the last quad. So it went right up into the apex, right? Came off into the 200 MA, held it, got into the next quad over top of the mid support, or right here, and followed the quad wall all the way up, straight up into the upper apex, then perfect short, then sat flat until it got into the next, didn't get up and go, sat flat, and now you're into the next. Really good setup. So if you follow that through, you should very easily have a great trade. You're actually in this quad now, so you can watch, right? Here's your first resistance, here's your first support. You can actually watch and plan you know, to the upside or downside. Uh, so that's SENS. HCM. GTHX, another one. This is following the quad wall perfect right now. And same thing. So if you read through this uh, information on this swing chart, it's going to teach you how to trade through these quads and teach you, you know, how to go from 10, 15, 20% a year to triple digits because you just win all the time, right? Like you don't, I mean, sure, you're going to have mild losses. You control your downside with these indicators. It just gives you an edge. It, it's uh, it's like a GPS, right? It gives, you, it gives you the map of what's going on and where the decisions are. Uh, so it's all decision to decision. GTX, HX, sorry, EXTR. This one's a little bizarre. Uh, visually, because uh, I was in it so deep looking around, but anyway, it explains it. Uh, edit, uh, a little bit of detail on edit, <clears throat> IPI, a little bit of detail on that one, and that one's really set up. <laughs> BRX, ESPR, there's one more in here I know I want to see. LSPN right on the 200 MA on the XOMA. So the symmetry in this is crazy. So this is the previous move, and now it's entering the same symmetrical zone as over here. And if it moves anything like it did last time, It'll move up through here, and then kaboom, and then back down into here. Do it all over again. 
typically when that happens and it's a double lamel into the same symmetry, then it's going to get its next leg up, typically. Here's a, here's a um, magnified zone of this, right? Now, if you look at this chart, it doesn't have all the intraday fibs in there. It just has the daily wide fib support and resistance. And then what I did was I added your real tight decisions, so your intraday fib decisions. And if you get into one of these trades and you want it even tighter, then I can do that for you too. You just let me know. So that's one of the, what I wanted to look at really quick. There's there is some fair, are some fairly good trade setups in this particular report. Uh, we're running all five reports here this week. Uh, the last one wasn't quite as good as this. It had some good setups, and the next three, well, I guess we'll see when I get through them. But this particular report was really good, and you'll find that on my either on our website compontrading.com, and you click on uh, blog and swinging trading newsletters and I was just trying to remember the password to get in here <laughs> anyway it's right on my right on my feed and it's on compound trading's uh, Twitter feed so the passwords on there you'll find it and if you can't just uh, send me a note okay so there's uh, there's the swing trading report that I highly encourage you to get into and get your setups out and then we have on the day some movers and shakers. So we're just going to take a really quick look at some of them here. The first one here will take a minute to set up and then they're fast. Sartage gets here. I'll have them switch this computer out. Okay, so what I do every day at midday is run through uh, the movers for the day. In 2018, I'm going to also run through the swing trades. Our swing trading platform, we're going to deep uh, content dive the swing trades this year. We're building out a really serious swing trade platform. So I'm going to be doing those reviews too. Uh, so a lot of these middays will turn into a lot longer than normal. And the ones that just don't set up properly, I'll fly past them really quick. So this is an example of one that just doesn't set up properly. CHCI, that bottom is way too long. Sure, it might prove out, but that's something that we can figure out later. So it's just not a good setup yet. Could be bottom, maybe not, but we're looking for high probability stuff like that was in that swing report. Uh, by the way, those ones that I looked at in the swing report weren't the only ones in there that are setting up. Uh, they're just the ones that I was highlighting. Uh, B-U-R-G, same story. This is not a technical setup going forward unless it starts to prove out. And uh, so I won't take time explaining why it's not. I'll just take time explaining the ones that do. Uh, SYBX testing the 200. Could be a bottom, but here again, look at how long it's been at the bottom. Just not something you want to spend time on unless it starts to prove itself out. NETE starting to prove itself out. What really proves it out is when it starts to test MAs and then it starts to build a trend. Then we really have something. And it's possible here, but it's not the best setup um, <clears throat> yet. YGYI. Uh, 
testing it's 200 same idea so you see the um, there's a theme here it's not a great chart Ren R E N N. So oil got up into its quad resistance early, early in pre-market. Um, I was watching Ren because, of course, oil was possibly breaking out of its structure, and of course, the people uh, that are in Ren long or in Ren or looking at Ren know that its short interest is high, and if oil breaks out, this will definitely break out. I like to trade it because it's smooth. It's got high. Uh, liquidity, large liquidity, trades very smooth. It's like VRX when the bulls are in it, it trades very smooth, uh, lots of liquidity, uh, gets me a better ROE and then I can get an oil itself, um, but uh, oil's not there yet. So it's getting close though. LX, uh, new issue that I can't really tell you much about. Close your eyes, go long and hope for the best. <laughs> Set a stop. NTEC testing the daily. We're we testing 200 on the daily. Testing the daily. Let's test the daily. Uh, this is one of those charts that could just get really serious really fast. So um, if I had to bet, uh, this is a good long. Uh, but it's got to prove out over that 200. And uh, I, you know, I just can't take a blind bet. You know, like a, a casino. MNKD, so Mankind, uh, quite a story behind this one. Anyway, structurally, it's held the 200 on the daily, so it got its big up, held the 200 on the daily, definite bottom pattern, um, right up against resistance right now. This could be bottom. So the last two I kind of like, Mankind and NTEC. Those are the two so far that are... Half decent G A L T. We've looked at it a number of times recently. It's officially in breakout. Pretty cool. Now be careful with symmetry. The symmetry says this is going to back off any second. You know what looks like the other. Um, I'm not going to chart it because I'm not going to trade it. And mankind, I might just chart this one tonight. We'll see. I might add it to the next swing report and NTEC. What I'm going to do is I'll alarm NTEC. So add alert. Uh, NTEC crossing the 200 MA. Let's do that. Mankind. Uh, this is setting up nice. I'm going to go with the 100. Probably add mankind to the swing report. I'll for sure add these uh, to the swing reports if they start to prove out a little better. Um, yeah. ATAI, just a junky chart. Um, but it is over the 200, it is proving out. It's just, it's trade is bad. It's not, it is not structurally, um, it's actions, it's not good. It's just, bad. Liquidity is an issue there. INSI up over the 200 looks fantastic. It's a garbage chart, but it looks fantastic. It looks like it's either this or the next is the bottom. like it a lot. So, Alarm this one. Not the fastest way to alarm, sorry. So what's that, three or four so far? LTEA, I just, you know, as a matter of principle, I won't trade it. It's total, I'm sure I could get in there on the one minute, three or five, and day trade it. It's just junk. SRNE. Uh, so I was in this, you know, down in here, and small gain, and look at it now. Oh. Anyway, up against resistance. It's too far gone off its MAs now. You have to return to the MAs, bounce. Just, you know, one of those scenarios. Galt. 
that's the one that we were looking at earlier, JP. So charted this one intensely before Christmas. There's a sidewinder setting up here. This is a really powerful scenario situation. Um, I'm just going to go for a price action alarm. So I'm really not going to have a choice but to chart these ones tonight because some of them are looking really good. So I'll dig into them. It's uh, going to hurt my pocketbook if I don't because um, like this is so structurally set up. It's like textbook. There's a sidewinder, really aggressive sidewinder setting up here on the daily. And when they set up on the daily, man, there's a lot of room there. And just how that 20 never got to the 100 and it's circling back around. Um, stock car size turning back up, volumes up, MACD's trending up, squeeze momentum's up. And the structure of this chart, all of it says, wow. That's a powerful chart. Like in terms of potential... Uh, vicious thrust that's got like like it's an eight or nine out of ten it's really high very powerful setup if it proves CRSP I have never, never traded it I don't think um, it's just so far gone now that you gotta let it come back to the MAs or you know gamble and close your eyes and go long TUM it's actually structurally setting up it just trades really poorly. It's it's highly, you know, manipulated, um, chaotic, but it is setting up structurally, just not my style. WPRT uh, room did well. I got a bunch of notes on this one. That's the sidewinder that's set up on it, uh, and it's coming out of the sidewinder now. And that's what happens in a sidewinder situation. You see how the twenty comes down, comes back through the fifty with price above. In this case, it it. it it actually hit the 100. So it's not as powerful as um, the one we looked at just now on JP that said. Uh, but same thing, right? There's a volume, there's a squeeze momentum indicator, MACD's trending up, stock RSI turned back up right here, right? Right when it popped out of the uh, sidewinder. Excellent setup. Congrats to people in our crew that got it. I got a few messages on that. It's nice to get the thanks. Felt good. EVGN, uh, just not a good setup. So those are your setups. So I'm gonna, I'm going to really dig into these tonight closely. There's about four in there I should really dig into. Uh, JP especially. That's a crazy nice setup. Like I almost want to just go long and sit in it right now, but they can fail these setups. But I don't know, man. This is looking like a gap tomorrow because it's above it's above the sidewinder now. It's above that 50. Price is above the 50. Oh, this is this is tough to. Wonder if I should just maybe start my entries. Wow, look at that. That's a weekly chart. Aggression. Very aggressive. Now, this candle right here is going to be a resistance 2265. Here's your resistance. This is going to be one heck of a play, possibly. Nobody ever knows for sure. You can just take, the goal is to take all the indicators, all the clues, and get your probability way up, right? I see. I see. I see. Very interesting setup. Like it a lot.
We got the alarms on the day, VRX. <laughs> Weekly. Right up against the 100. Daily. Oh, powerhouse. So we, yeah, powerhouse. There's your resistance. We've been on top of this all the way through. That's your resistance point there, 2203. Huh. I won't go through all the other resistance from historical. You can go through them, but wow, what a setup. So yeah, I'm gonna be going through these tonight. GCAP, well, VRX is one on our regular. Um, this is the one that uh, I had a small position on this morning that I uh, took a bit of haircut on. No big deal, but still. TSLA, Tesla. MACD is about to turn up on the weekly. Stock car side, it's a little iffy. Iffy. Iffy, iffy. See, this was a sidewinder setup. It did get a pop out of it, but it didn't do well. And specifically why the bulls backed off, I'm not sure. I mean, that was a decent pop, 241 to 303, but I'm thinking, great. I was going to hit that one. Um, the 20 got down below the 100. You see that? Instead of staying above the 100. So it's not, it's not the tightest sidewinder. It worked. XXII. Yeah, those are from last session. And then losers on the day costs TCCO, MR, US, WFT, US. Um, yeah. No, none of those, uh, none of those ring. Okay, so it's 1240. That's midday review for December, January 2nd, 2018. And last, sorry, if you guys have any charts for the crew that you want me to look at, share and share alike, or we're going to call it midday. And by the way, these are going to get uh, much more in depth as we go through the season here. Um, not even the season, over the next couple weeks. Starting tomorrow, maybe Thursday, somewhere before the end of the week, these are going to get it pretty in-depth because there's so many setting up. But anyway, SKT. Sean, you also sent one to me I, last night. I haven't had a minute. I've been actually just working since you sent one to me. Maybe this is it. SKT. Tanger Factory Outlet Centers. Wow. Sean's a pro. He does his homework. Some people just show up and go to work every day at what they do. Crazy. Great setup. So here's what typically happens in this scenario, just on whole, on average. What happens is it fails, it'll pop, pop up or not, but typically it'll pop up and it'll fail the first round, it'll reconsolidate and then it's gone. That's typically how it works. Yeah, I see the gap. It's huge. It's massive. Gorgeous. 
just a gorgeous chart. No, it might not fail. And usually the fail is not a big deal. Like the way that, you know, if you follow this through, you know, you keep your positions to one fifth or one tenth and and you just pick your spot, right? And you just pepper it as it goes up and down, you know, in the two hundred you know, because it'll typically go get up over the two hundred about to here, say to twenty seven thirty, and then it'll come off to about twenty six ish. Um, and then it'll go. Typically, not always. It might just go. That's why it's nice to pepper, you know, as you're on your way in. Um, so this one I'm going to go through tonight too. I wonder how the weekly looks. Thanks for bringing that in, Sean. Thanks for sending it to me. I just, I, you know, I uh, while I was working all night, I was like, damn, I gotta look at that one. I gotta look at that one. I gotta look at it, you know. So there's your resistance. So that's probably where she's going to back off. So you're probably going to get to that. So by the time price and the 50 on the weekly meet, you're going to be at 27, whatever, 30. I think that's what I said. Too. And then it'll back off, you know, fairly close to this 20. But the, by then the 20 will be, you know, 25, 60, 26. It's going to, on whole, on average, that's what it'll do. And then it'll go. And then your 100 is your next resistance. But it'll be into the gap by then. Super sweet play, super strong. MACD, look at how the MACD is trending on the weekly. You got so much room on that, and that squeeze is now green. Uh, when's earnings? You probably got a good 60 days, 70, 80 days. That doesn't even say on here. Yet. I guess it wouldn't. What was the last? Huh. Wow. So that's why it tanks so hard. So the bad news is in. Yeah. Sweet. Sweet play. Anybody else got one? Thanks for that, Sean. That's awesome. It's not kind of good. That's a sweet one. So I'm gonna. I'll work on that one tonight too. I'll work. Uh, I have to go through all of these. In January, you can't fool around. Like last January, I made sure I was on top of it, and I. I can't say for sure, but I know 70, 80 percent of my gains were in the first two quarters. Um, anyway, there's just something always about January and February with me. Oh yeah. Cool. Well, thanks, guys. Gals, 12.46, January 2nd. I'm going to call it an afternoon. i got heavy reporting to do tonight. This video will be the first thing that comes out, and then uh, the uh, reviews of these charts will be the second thing that comes out. And then i got a few algorithm models I can get out tonight yet. Okay, peace. Thanks.